are so good they're so world beaten that if you anyone who's seen the tinklers you know you got to love the tinklers and you got to want more tinklers and that's that's the sad part um i just they hardly play out very much anymore and um you know hopefully this movie's going to answer some questions that we all have about the tinklers and we're, we'll get to see a little bit more of the tinklers and then maybe this movie is going to have to um be the way people will see the tinklers which was which is is sure better than not seeing them at all <laughs> I like them. <laughs> Good guys. But they should offer, you know, Brian should offer a reward. But let me speak on his behalf. Brian will give $100 to anyone who can, who can listen to the Tinklers, really listen to them, and not like the Tinklers. It's $100. I don't think there's anything. I'm not worried. One of the things is that they don't have to, like, intimidate their audience. They don't have to act like that they're more brilliant or they're more talented or they're more skillful than, than the audience is in order to, to get their ideas across. And, and I, I think it's, it's really refreshing, it's important, and there should be more work like it. You know, everybody play an instrument, everybody sing. If you can't really sing, that's okay. If you can't really play, no problem. Every time they play live, I mean, it's an event they play so rarely. Uh, as I mentioned before, people just root for them so hard. There's no show business at all. It's just sharing, sharing music and stories through their music, and you know, it just melts the room. If you can find somebody nicer than the Tinklers, Brian's going to pay a hundred dollars for that too. If you'd seen the Tinklers, or if you become familiar with their songs, it's got to be life-changing. Cause you plus me, yeah. you, cause you, you plus me equals one. Love is to us as the warmth is to the sun. It's you and me, you and me, you see. Uh, uh, then do another one. I called again and got your father. I guess I got him out of bed. He seemed rather impatient. Mentioned his fist in my head. You and me got a special thing. I guess we're just lucky in love. I thank my lucky stars. For you, my dear, I guess there's a God above smiling on me down here. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. A 
lot of times people talk about a kind of you know Baltimore attitude or a Baltimore funky kind of um, offbeat art scene. Well, I think that the Tinklers come out of it's a it was a period in the late seventies and the early eighties, um, and it it hit Baltimore, but it was really everywhere. And there was a lot of experimentation going on in the arts, a lot of blurring of the arts, and there was all kinds of new terms like intermedia and all this kind of stuff, conceptual art and performance art. And they very much come out of those, that, that kind of a new strain. Yeah, I moved here in the early 80s, and you know the music I was seeking out was punk rock music, which a lot of that was happening, but immediately you know, started to hear about or see signs of more underground music, what I guess people would call art music now. In Baltimore we were putting on a lot of things like performances and poetry readings and doing all kinds of different kinds of multimedia events. You know, doing these uh, funny performances, flying giant white flags in the park and um, getting up on stage and enacting, you know, sort of going from old age to early birth and there was, didn't seem to be any rules or any um, particular scene that you could identify as a scene. It was just things happening in different places. Mixing the visual and the art, the vis visual and the musical and the, the kind of communal um, you know, space with the audience. Various kind of oddballs that sort of floated around. Audience participatory. That scene shows in unusual places. Anyway, it sounded like it was pockets of people doing interesting stuff who probably kind of all knew each other, which is very much a Baltimore kind of scenario. Give me something, give you something at this camp price, I'm sure you'll find it very nice. Say you've been down, coughing the crop, I've got something to fix you up. Whatever your needs, whatever you desire, a little bit of money is all that it requires. Stick, cigar box, and rubber band. It makes rubber band guitar. I think, you know, we started making our own instruments because, you know, kind of the idea of Tinkler's was just making your own song, so you might as well be making up your own instruments too. So rubber band guitar seemed like a way to have a guitar. Make you 200 overnight. Give me some money for this gadget I got. And then, you know, we would also make various ways to, things to bang on. But heck, the idea was just you know, making your own music. Yeah, so you might as well make your own instrument. Yeah. I got, uh, you know, thousands of books in my house, but this is the is the most exciting book in the house, the Tinkler book. This contains charts and some songs and things. I'm gonna go over a few of them here. They had charts for almost everything. Dog chart, and then there's a heaven and hell chart, mom and dad and school and TV chart. Good things and bad things. This must be a good bad things chart. There's the boss chart, the Tinkler's love chart. You know, this one explains various smells that um, have accumulated over the years. Burp and fungus people with flashlight heads. This is a dream chart. <laughs> Daddy, you're a young girl. Um, I don't really understand that one, but you know, I'm sure maybe the, maybe later in the in the movie the Tinkers will kind of explain it or something. Well, we brought these charts um, that w uh, we made uh, back in 1980 um, during the uh, second year of the Tinklers. Um, but this is like how we wrote our first songs. Um, the first chart we did is this um, scary not scary chart. It could be scary or not scary. <laughs> Things that are not scary could be uh, moving or not moving. Everything is divided into scary that is missing and not scary. Uh, 
things that are scary could be moving or not moving. Things that are scary and moving could be things that get on top of you, things that don't get on top of you. <laughs> things that are scary and moving that get on top of you could be squirmy or buzzy or big. Scary and moving things that get on top of you that are buzzy, that are electric could be either things that shock you or things that you get your fingertips caught in. And so that's what we used to like make the song, Don't Put Your Finger in the Fan. And then eventually that would lead to a song that would fit in perfect with whatever, whatever the chart has just led you to. So. Here, don't put your finger in the fan. You know it's, um, you know it's funny. People laugh when you when when they hear that song, but it's it. You know, how are you going to argue with that advice? <laughs> you know, that's perfect advice. Don't put your finger in the fan. struck me as people and as artists as really smart, really thoughtful, really um, caring, conscientious, funny, weird children. The Slowpoke album, there's, on the inside, there's pictures of themselves as kids. I think Charles has got like a cigarette and he's acting really tough and Chris got like a sitar and he's got this like crazy hairdo and he's playing his sitar and it's kind of like this great um, I think window into them as little boys. Sort of like uh, child songs for adults where you know it comes across as being very simple and childlike but very very profound and instructional at the same time. I mean I think that's what is so great about their songs. There's if you just listen to the if you just listen to the sound, you think, oh, it's some goofy thing. And then you, you know, you listen and you think, oh, this is about a girl who's starving herself. Or, oh, this is about the Chernobyl explosion and the aftermath. I mean, it's, it's very sophisticated the way it just kind of slips in. They're actually singing about something, something real. They just are always so great at just getting to the root of complex problems very simply, you know, with three verses and, you know, two-line chorus, you know. Or even just the little history songs, you know, like the dodo bird. I mean, do you know that one? It's just like, I mean, actually it helps you like, oh yeah, it's that whole thing about, you know, they chew the seeds and then they, they digest the seeds and they, you know, they scoop the seeds out and then the other animals come and the whole ecosystem is destroyed, you know, by these stupid sailors, you know, beating the dodo birds over the head. One of the mysteries to me was the, you know, the, the childlike thing. Was it put on? Was it, uh, you know, natural? And I never, I gave up trying to 
decipher that. You know, I just didn't even worry about it. We are offered to play with half Japanese that is part of the Richmond Artists Workshop. Charles was so terrified that in the three hour drive to Richmond from Baltimore, he held my girlfriend's hand. Uh, and I think that continued in, in the place too. Uh, and I, I was a little perturbed by that, but I liked Charles enough that I figured, uh, you know, it's okay. Charles, he said, you know, we, we got this band that's the Tinklers. Okay, you know, come down and play with us. And then, so they, um, but it was like, it was not quite like how the Tinklers was any time after this. It was more like, I mean, they crawled into sleeping bags and were playing like the guitars laying down on the floor. In sleeping bags, zipped up, I mean, completely in there, which was really hot and uncomfortable, with electric guitars, noodling, you know, just crazy noises, finger tapping, scratching kind of stuff. And they had guitars and microphones inside the sleeping bags. The guitars were, I guess they would have had to have sort of played them like this. The microphones were kind of laid near their mouth so they could kind of, you know, reach over and sing. Grabbing mics and going, you know, you boys settle down, you know, you're acting like wild Indians and doing it in that John Waters slash Mr. Ray kind of Baltimore accent, really, really, you know, exaggerated. And those I guess through the little crack in the zipper, it went into amplifiers. So nobody ever saw them the entire show. That's, that's my memory of that first show, was them laying on the floor, playing inside sleeping bags, and Charles reading some disgusting things. And I remember thinking um, that maybe he's kind of creepy. You know, is this the kind of guy I want to hang around with? Because uh, I had just met him. Turned out he is the kind of guy because he's, you know, very nice. Uh, people, you know, like applauded and were very nice, so I felt kind of comfortable. Um, I think Charles, more than anything else, just wanted to get in a sleeping bag and hide. Dear All Things Considered, Thursday, August 9th, the Iraqis are dug in along the border with Saudi Arabia. One of the seemingly numberless specialists on the Middle East is speculating on what it would take to escalate the current crisis to a nuclear confrontation. And if all of this is not trial enough, NPR next subjects its listeners to 60 seconds of atonal dribble by a group called the Tinklers. Uh, back in 1990, um, right after Casserole came out, the first CD, first record, uh, Bob Boylan, who's one of the um, editors at one of the producers of, of All Things Considered um, asked us to uh, play some of our songs for, for All Things Considered because they're kind of like little short topical songs that you could use as kind of a, a little um, segue in between stories. Um, but the response to those songs was not like unilaterally positive. This past week, we received more mail than ever about the musical satirical group The Tinklers. In the spirit of fairness, here's a selection of the range of reaction we've received. They are puerile, inane, monotonous, dull, repetitive, and otherwise worthless, according to Bernie Greenberg of Newton Center, Massachusetts. They never make it out of the realm of stupidity into that of humor, writes Robert Elrich of Seattle, Washington. And so there's, there are a lot of, um, of negative feedback. Um, and uh, my mother heard them saying all those things about us, and she got kind of sad. Ed Machak of Endicott, New York, offers this quantitative analysis. On a scale of 1 to 10, the Tinklers are minus 5. Truly the worst musical group in the known universe. That's the judgment of Rudy Robinson of Framingham, Massachusetts. And Kevin Schaefer of Annapolis, Maryland, offers this opinion. The Tinklers were amusing once, twice maybe, but as a regular feature, it is like a bad joke being retold over and over. So, but I think... You know, he thought it was kind of amusing because it seemed like they never really, you know, had so many letters to the editor on about any other subject like they were doing with us, you know. It was like every every time, you know, we did something, then he'd have a series of, you know, these letters. So it was kind of, it was kind of funny. Yeah, so at least they were paying attention. Yeah. The 
Ticklers, hurt and frustrated at their inability to be nice to everyone, decide to take leave of their friends and followers and the life they have made for themselves. That's something that should be, like, that's what's wrong with, yeah. <laughs> never mind, that's, I mean, but like, why, you know, why isn't that on television? That's all, because, you know, that's my whole point, like, all, all anybody wants, I mean, you know, give some, have some choices, you know, and not everybody likes to watch the, the Tinklers versus the Mecha Tinklers. Suddenly, a strange and terrible sight fills the screen. But also, not everybody likes to watch everybody. They claim everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> you know? How's everybody going to... I've never even seen it. You know, and maybe everybody... Maybe if I saw it, I'd love him, but... The Tanklers decide to return to civilization to right these wrongs. Who? Oh, that, that's a poster. We better take it as evidence. We might need it later. I'm just saying, let, give... give some choices. I know I'm tuning in the Mecha Tinklers versus the Tinklers. Having left behind their small haven of lush wild wilderness, the Tinklers arrive at a desolate industrial wasteland. According to my map, this should be Sequoia National Forest. Yow! What happened to our grand old redwoods? And if I'm the only one watching it, that's still okay. Why? Why? They, someone should invent like a cable where you would get like lots and lots of channels. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. They, they got that. But but I'm saying like, even all the channels got the same shows on them. So you know, what's the difference there? And I cried the tears of the music that is gone when the bird has forgotten his song. I walk and I listen. Well, why doesn't somebody have a network that plays Tinklers? An all Tinkler network. If I had some money, if I can win this, if I can win, win some of this money coming up with solving some of these things here, I'm starting a network. That's all. I'm going to start my own network here and put the Tinklers on. It's going to be an all Tinkler network. Come on, come on, come on. Well, something I find still an enduring mystery is even though I've spent a lot of time with both of them, I still can't tell who's singing on a lot of the songs. I just, I, and even when they're both, you know, they're alternating, I think, okay, that's Crit. No, that's Crit. No, is that Charles? I, I still can't tell. And they have very different voices and they have very different personalities and, you know, they're, they're, they're both, you know, so, um, so unique and idiosyncratic and yet I still can't tell them apart. Just the chemistry between them is, is so great and even when they're completely off it, it, it works. They're sort of like two different tracks uh, on the Tinkler sort of, um, I don't know, view of life. There's kind of like dreamy science philosophy and there's kind of like monster trucks, you know, and body surfing, you know, and, and cars, you know, and that kind of guy stuff, you know, and then there's kind of like, you know, we're out here in the world and we're thinking about deep things, you know, and, and, and obviously the magic is where the two come together. Well, Chris has always had a kind of sort of um, gentle prof professorial kind of demeanor. I know that he's worked with um, deaf students. Um, he's, he's brought some of his students up 
to to do performance work in Baltimore. I've always, as long as I've known Chris, I always used to joke with him that um, I wish that I could come back in another life as his kid. He's, I just think he'd be the, the best father. Just never see him, you know, lose his temper or be a nasty guy. So I always used to say, you know, I wish I could, you know, come back and be your kid. It wouldn't be accurate to say Chris is more outgoing, but he's more, um, immediately um, friendly and warm. You know, I think Charles is, is all of those things too. It's just a slower um, mystery unfolds with Charles. <laughs> you know, and I love the guy. He's a great guy. And, you know, he just doesn't change. He doesn't need to. You know, he's like he's fine the way he is. Right now we're in Towson University, which is very close to the once Towson Artist Supplies, um, which uh, has been a kind of a landmark in Towson. Charles has worked there for a long time, I, more than 25 years. <laughs> well, I'm not a voice here and free. I've seen some bands play that have been impressive. I've seen, I've played with some bands that have been, you know, world beaten. But, um, but the Tinklers, I mean, I, you know, for for certain things like for for my band, I mean, certain things like, you know, I can, I I know some a couple chords I don't don't even hardly use them. But but I can play my music better than anybody. But you know, but I can't play Bruce Sting, Springsteen's music better than him. Because that's what he does. And the Tinklers, for for what the Tinklers do, there's nobody, nobody in the world comes, you know, even close to, you know, to doing that as well as they do. Um, you know, other, I mean, and I'm not sure. Maybe nobody else is even trying, because because you know, I'm not sure what would be the point there. But I think like a lot of people in Baltimore really just feel like. The Tinklers are mine, you know. I think I think that their music just it makes people feel that way. I mean, I think if you like it, you love it. The Tinklers, 
I feel are, are one of the most real bands I've ever heard in that they truly uh, they're truly themselves in their music and that's what makes them so unique I think if everybody in the world were to uh, make the most real music that comes from inside them we would have uh, millions and millions of, uh, of incredibly unique bands that sound like no one else but uh, unfortunately there aren't that many of them but we do have the Tinklers who really sound like nobody else I've ever heard. Thank you. about Tinkleton. People ask us, how did we get to be so nice? Well, now we have an answer. Tinkler Town. At Tinkler Town, you learn how to smell flowers. At Tinkler Town, you learn how to feed the hungry. At Tinkler Town, you learn how to be nice to dogs. I'm, I'm Dave. I am a graduate of Tinkler Town, and I feel a whole lot nicer and I think I act, act nicer, too. My friends have noticed the change, as well as my family and employer. They say it works, and I believe it. Seeing <coughs> you at Tinkler Town. Call before midnight tonight. That's 1-800-TINKLER. That's 1-800-846-5537. Mike Cheese Wolf in the back He said Mike Cheese Wolf was not so mean He was pretty nice as a matter of fact 